Well, we finally reached Futurama's newest anthology-style episode, a format that has historically been very hit or miss for the show, at least in my opinion. But where does the prince and the product land on that spectrum? Do we have another certified anthology classic, or is it a big dud? Let's dive into the latest episode. This week's episode of Johnny Two Cellos is brought to you by Cartoons That Curse, the podcast about adult animation starring Johnny Two Cellos and Toonrific Tariq. They've covered nearly the entirety of Futurama so far, and have been mostly keeping up with the new season as well, episode by episode, so go check it out. Subscribe. All right, I'll just be up front. I did not care for this episode. But outside of the original anthology of interest episodes and reincarnation in the Comedy Central era, I am just not a fan of Futurama's anthology style stuff in general. I feel like a series set in the future already has so many possibilities, it almost feels a bit redundant to shift so dramatically into these direct parodies. But on top of the anthology stuff being a bit of a struggle for me, the story of the framing device really frustrated me, as I'm sure it did for a lot of other Futurama fans who have been very excited to see the show treat Fry and Leela as an established couple after all of these years. And then of course, this episode has this bomb dropping in the first two and a half minutes. I was falling in love with the Prince of Space. We're getting married! Now, it's clear by the end of the episode that this is all non-canon nonsense, but there's pretty much no indication that this is the case until the final shot of the entire episode. And it's also clear that this whole story is supposed to be about as flimsy as possible on a narrative level. In fact, I don't think the Prince of Space talks even one single time. The entire framing device takes up less than six minutes of the episode's runtime, while still telling a full quote-unquote story. It's a melodramatic, rushed narrative that makes very little sense and has no meaning full explanations on purpose. I wasn't really in love with him. I was under a spell. A magic spell? No, a science spell. So I do understand what they were trying to do here. The anthology stories are these advertisements that are sponsoring the episode of Futurama, but they take up so much time that the narrative itself is just hollow and unsatisfying. I think it's an interesting, ambitious idea. But sadly for me, a parody of a hollow and unsatisfying narrative is still hollow and unsatisfying. Maybe made a bit more unsatisfying by the fact that I just generally don't like the anthology stories in Futurama. While it was all non-canon and meant to be silly, I just think that the audience is probably a bit tired of being jerked around with the Fry and Leela stuff, even in a non-canon story. For me, personally, it's just kind of exhausting. I felt a little exasperated by the episode, as someone who is sick of the will they won't they stuff, and also isn't a huge fan of the anthology parody style storytelling. Before I dive into the anthology stories themselves, there are some things I did appreciate about this episode, particularly visually. I think this is actually one of the best looking episodes so far this season, both in the framing device and in the anthology stories. The Windows universe in particular has so many great designs. The Planet Express building looks excellent, and all of the characters translate really well into that metallic toy style. It was cool to see stuff like Fry exiting the freezer tube recreated, but my absolute favorite is for sure the look of these mountains. These backgrounds are so, so great. The little seam and rivets being visible for the perfectly cone-shaped mountains. Really great looking stuff. Not to mention this incredible wind-up snowflake transition. I loved that. The Round Wheels world has a lot to appreciate. The designs of the cars themselves are okay, but what I really loved was the design of the world with these Hot Wheels style tracks. I love when they travel up to space and it basically just kind of looks like a bedroom. The stars are just on construction paper that's been taped to the wall. These are really great details. Also a huge fan of the intricacies of the tracks that's connecting New New York as well. The King of Space's castle is also a design I dug. And though this episode is in canon, Leela probably sold this castle to the king when she worked in real estate, based on this gag back in Overclockwise. How's the intergalactic real estate going? Pretty good. I just sold a castle to the king of space. I like when Futurama takes a small gag like this and builds it out more later. It's very reminiscent of the is the space pope reptilian joke before ever having met him. But as far as the stories for these anthologies go, I really do struggle to stay focused on the parody storylines. All three revolve around death and reincarnation in some form or another. And while I appreciate that they all have a common theme, I'm not exactly sure why this is the theme they chose for toy advertisement parody cartoons. Windows revolves around Fry's winding unit coming to the end of its life cycle prematurely because it ran slowly while he was frozen. It was at least nice to see Bender be the one with the biggest issue with this. At peace, you selfish jerk! You're my best friend! 
promise you won't leave me! This, at least, feels very in character for Bender, as does his ultimate sacrifice later in the episode. But the whole reincarnation metaphor later in the episode was strange. We see Bender's parts melt down and be reforged into a wind-up airplane, and I guess that kind of stuff just happens underground in the Wind-O world? Uh, again, I didn't quite understand why this was the metaphor for reincarnation in the Wind-O story. The Round Wheels death and rebirth story, at the very least, made a little bit more sense conceptually, since chop shops are actually a thing, though it is sort of crazy to do a slasher horror story set in a universe full of cars. Like, imagine if Pixar made Cars 4 and it was about a serial killer. You've also sort of got a ship of Theseus story going on here, with Zoidberg adding the parts of all of the other cars to his own body until he's no longer got any of his own parts left. Zoidberg not having friends is obviously a big part of his character, but I always felt like his whole thing is that he's still a great person regardless. It feels a little out of character for him to go on a murdering spree, but I guess that's why this is all non-canon. The Rubber Ducks and Egulon story was probably the strangest one, but at least it finally explained why they sold these Futurama egg pins at Comic Con this year. It was sort of funny to me that the framing device was throwing a huge wrench in the Fry and Leela connection, while this anthology story was simultaneously once again framing them as each other's true love. Almost like the writers are just sort of teasing the audience with this entire episode. And at the very least, I liked the entire egg slash duck metaphor for death and rebirth in this story a little bit more than the other ones. It's got a very cute Fry and Leela ending. But again, I just don't really understand why this was the theme for an anthology episode that was also parodying toy advertisement. I just really struggled with that the entire episode. I think this one also feels like it's paced a bit oddly as well, and that's because it sort of is. Usually for these anthology episodes, you use the framing device to set up the story, tell that story in one act, cut to commercial, and repeat. But because the entire game of this episode was that the toy advertisements were interrupting the actual Futurama story, they wanted to highlight how disruptive those toy commercials commercials could be to the story. So, the actual commercials slash act breaks take place in the middle of the toy commercial narratives. That way, we see them cut out of the toy commercials and back to Futurama, and then the Futurama narrative is once again abruptly interrupted by the next toy commercial. I think one of the reasons I always liked the old anthology of interest storylines is that the What If Machine itself creates a layer of canon to what we're seeing. It's showing us a potential series of events that could take place if something were to happen to the characters we know and love. Everyone acts very in character in those stories because it's just these sort of alternative series of events, and therefore we still learn something about those characters. I think when the focus becomes these completely separated parodies, it doesn't really mean as much to me on a narrative level. It doesn't mean much to the characters that I care about. Even at the very least, in the What If Machine episodes, the characters watch the alternate timeline play out, and therefore they learn something about themselves. It always felt like such a clever way for the show to do and anthology style storytelling, and it's always bummed me out that they abandoned it in favor of these newer style of anthology episodes, none of which have been particularly good to me. With the one exception of Reincarnation, which is an amazing episode, in no small part due to the incredible animation. Sadly, I think I pretty firmly feel that this is my least favorite of the season, but again, the anthology stories really just haven't been my thing since the Fox era, and I think with the framing device opting to revolve around Leela leaving Fry again, I just really couldn't get behind this one in any way. But but they can't all be winners, and I'm always curious to see if they can break the anthology curse each year. Hopefully next year we get something cool. Next week is the finale for season 11, or season 8A, depending on what kind of dork you are. I'm very excited to talk about that one with all of you. Before I go, I once again want to shout out the writers and actors strikes. Please show your support for the creatives who make these shows possible. I'll be posting a link in the description for resources that can help support these striking workers. And I want to hear what you think. Did this one bother you as much as it did for me? Are you a fan of the anthology stories? Let me know below in the comments, and I'll Catch you next time. Peace. I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons. He's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos. Watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.